Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome to chapter 12, the lecture on presentations. This is going to be important for your final project as you are expected to do a presentation either via recording in a video or live in class. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about planning and organizing, composing, preparing it, how to rehearse, how to present, and how to go about organizing a group type presentation. So presentations, first you need to understand your audience and how formal your presentation needs to be. So plan for your audience. Is it the proper topic? Do I need graphic aids? What is the location, the time? And we're gonna talk a minute about stage fright too. So how are we gonna determine how to organize and compose, prepare those outlines, um, notes, appearance, how to rehearse, how to present with confidence, and again, how to organize in a group. So for a presentation, the higher up the corporate ladder you move, the more likely you are to present and have to be expected to give presentations, either face-to-face -face or electronically through Zoom, especially nowadays. So you may be speaking to several different types of people. One of them is an internal audience, and that is people within your organization, both above and below you in your organizational hierarchy. And it could, or it could be an external audience, which that could be suppliers, vendors, customers, the public. It could just be basically anybody. So you may also be expected to do spontaneous informal presentations. Uh, those are going to occur when someone says, hey, come talk to us about X, Y, and Z. You're not going to have any time to prepare or rehearse. A formal presentation, on the other hand, that's going to be planned in advance, rehearsed. You're going to have things like a podium, a smart board, a projector, microphones, all the, all the bells and whistles. So formal presentations are usually going to often include distributed, distributed, there we go, distributed um, information from the speaker, such as samples, flyers, or even uh, multimedia. So when you're planning, first, analyze your audience. Um, the planning stage is going to be essential. So develop a topic that is appropriate for your audience, create graphic aids, assess the location. Where is this happening? Is it electronic? Is it in person? Um, if you have the ability to visit the location ahead of time, I encourage you to do that. Plan your time accordingly and anticipate and plan to handle stage fright. It happens to all of us. We all get stage fright. But let's go ahead and start with the audience. So who is your audience? What is their role? How many people are going to be there? What is your audience expectations? What multimedia do they expect and what do they know about the topic? So in order to connect with your listeners, you need to know who they are. So these types of questions are going to help you assess your audience. Now, let's look at the topic. Um, most speakers are given a topic or they're said, hey, talk about this. So for an example, you might be asked to um, present something on a written document that you've done, such as a progress report, like we've talked about in previous um, slides. A lot of times, especially if you are the author of a report or one of the authors, there is a good high possibility that you will be asked to present um, on the information that is included in that document. Now, when you look at graphic aids, let's be real. Audiences are only going to get maybe, if you're lucky, 25% of what you're actually saying. So the way that you increase the comprehension of your audience is to use graphics. Everybody likes pretty graphics, pretty colors. So you can use these to clarify ideas, highlight important information, help audiences see, not just hear the message. And when we're talking about graphic aids, you know, a PowerPoint presentation is a graphic aid. Don't clutter your PowerPoint presentations with a lot of words. Too many words on a specific slide, and I say that as I have a slide up that has a lot of words, is going to basically tune out your audience. Um, I do attempt to make these a little bit better, um, but unfortunately for graphic aids, for some reason, it got wordy. So when you're choosing your graphic aids, what is your important information? What is the complex or difficult to understand information? This might be helped 
to make it easier to understand with a graphic. What statistics or figures are particularly important? Are you showing a trend? All you wanna see is that upward trend, throw that graph on the screen. Then finally ask yourself how to best to illustrate. So different types that you can use, you can use flip charts and transparencies. Those are for the old folk in us. You can use PowerPoint and multimedia slides, um, videos, audio, dry erase boards, handouts, physical objects or photographs. So for physical objects, I don't, you may have been in a class before where you've passed around an example of something and everyone got to touch it and kind of look at it closely. That's a good graphical aid. Um, the other thing, again, photographs, um, you can combine these. You can put a several of these within a slide deck. So don't feel like you need to use one and only one of graph type of graphical aid. So guidelines, make the graphics large enough for everyone to see. There might be people sitting in the very back of the audience, that's usually me. And you want them to be able to see the graphic just as easily as the person in the front. Don't crowd numbers or images, make sure that it is easily seen. You don't wanna to put too much on one. Um, attractive design counts, but the message is more important. Consider handouts. Now, when you do a handout, your audience usually can keep them. So make sure you're not putting anything on a handout that you wouldn't want the audience to take with them. Understand the requirements of the software used to create graphical aids. What are your limitations? What can you do? What can't you do? When you have a location, you, there are several things you need to look for. Do you have a podium? Is there a table for handouts? What are you looking for? Will you be standing in front of the audience? Are you sitting with them? Are you sitting with another speaker? What does it look like? Is the stage elevated? Can you walk around? I have a tendency to wander when I actually lecture. So it makes Zoom recordings really difficult. But how large is the room? Does the sound carry? Do you need a microphone? Um, I prefer not to use a microphone unless I absolutely need one. Is audiovisual equipment already there? Is it compatible with your computer? So for example, say you need to, to tap into an HDMI and you happen to have a Mac computer. That is going to be on you to bring the converter. It's not on the audiovisual guys. Ask me how I know, personal experience. Are you going to have internet access or do you need to make sure you have hard copies on your hard drive before you get there? Is someone going to introduce you? Is someone going to be helping you with equipment, flipping through your slides? Or are you going to be doing everything yourself? So there's a lot of tools and things out there that do help with things like that. You've got those auto um, slide advancers that have the little button that you can hold. I've got one of those as well for when I do lectures and um, talks. So they're super cheap. Um, so it makes you more professional and more prepared. Some audience considerations. Is it going to be difficult for your audience to find the location? Is it hard for them to find parking? Once they're in the building, can they find the proper room? Is it accessible for people with disabilities? Are there restrooms? Are there refreshments? Okay, put yourself in the shoes of your audience. Think of things that they would want to know. Can everybody see and hear the presenter? Is the location appropriate with lighting and seating? Is the audience gonna sit? Are they gonna stand? Um, and are the seats arranged appropriately for the group? So for example, if you're doing a regular typical lecture, a movie theater style probably works. If you are doing something with small group activities, you might wanna do small rounds um, and have tables for them to actually do their group work. Plan your time, make sure you meet the expectations of your audience when it comes to time. Nobody likes anyone that runs over time, not gonna lie. Ask how much time you're gonna have and stick to that. Even go under if possible. Be aware of your pacing. I have a tendency to speak very fast and I know that. So I try to be aware of speaking slowly, pausing after each section, Again, nervous speakers tend to talk too fast, or apparently if you're a Yankee speaker, because I'm a Yankee speaker and I always talk too fast. Now, a lot of times talking fast can be taken as stage fright, but stage fright is really energy that you can harness. Recognize and plan for your body to respond to anxiety. If you have a tendency to get sweaty, you might want to wear something a little bit um, lighter weight as far as 
your material goes, you're not going to want to wear a big heavy sweater, even if it's in the middle of winter, if you tend to get warm and sweat. Anticipate ex excess adrenaline and use it to give your introduction an important points extra emphasis. Again, if possible, harness that stage fright and use it for good instead of evil. Your organizational plan. So organize your presentation for your listener situation and needs. There are two different approaches. There is a direct approach or an indirect approach. So the direct approach basically means I'm going to state the main idea first, and then I'm going to explain and support after. The indirect approach is more of a um, mystery, okay? You're going to gradually build up with evidence and then convince them of your point and then sh tell them the main idea and show them the main idea at the end of the presentation. So it's either at the beginning or at the end. As you're going through your presentation, let your audience know what to expect. Make sure you have an introduction and a conclusion. Listeners remember first and last. So always reiterate the important points at the end in your conclusion as you wrap up. In your introduction, a direct quote is a great way to start an introduction. Start with a rhetorical question, which is a question that really you're not asking to be answered. Start with facts or statistics that might be surprising. Um, start with a statement and then disprove that statement. Um, when you get to a conclusion, summarize those key points, have a call to action. It also signals your audience that you are wrapping up your presentation and it gives a good solid ending to it. Now, we talked about the beginning and the end. Let's talk about the middle. So address with the, the audience with the words you and your early and often. You are speaking to a group of humans. So you want to speak to the group as if you're speaking to an individual. Use familiar words. Define words that you're not sure if your audience will know. Use simple sentences. Give the listeners the information they want and need and explain why you're giving it and why it's relevant. Emphasize your main point. Repeat, restate essential ideas. Emphasis, emphasis, repetition, those are going to be what is going to help you. That's what's going to stay in your audience's mind. They say that repeating things at least three times is the best way to get someone to remember something. Announce transitions. So we're going to move on to this next topic. Great transition. Answer questions you think that they're going to be likely to ask. Another thing I like to do is if I am actually repeating a presentation or a lecture, I go ahead and incorporate the questions that were asked the previous time I presented. And finally, stay within your time limits. Again, we've all been on the, re the receiving end. No one likes lectures, presentations, anything to run late. So outlines and notes. Your goal is an informal conversational style of presentation. Use an outline or notes to get yourself prepared, but still remember you want it to be kind of, you know, on the conversational tone. You don't want to be reading off of those outlines or notes. So a lot of times you can generate an outline or notes using PowerPoint does it, index cards, or even sheets of paper. But be careful if you're going to write notes, don't write out complete sentences, phrases, or something that you're going to want to read directly from. Prepare neat notes, write big words, and use lots of white space. Structure notes uniformly, bulleted lists, numbered lists, outline, something that you can easily follow. If you're using cards, write only one idea on each card or even one word on each card. Number your note cards because you know what? If you don't, you're going to drop them just telling you and use outlines and notes to spark your memory. So I have, I very rarely use outlines or notes. If I do, typically it is a single word or something. I will use a Sharpie on a piece of paper and I will write it quite large so I can see it from far away. And all I'm doing is I'm reminding myself, talk about this, talk about this other topic. I'll just put them on there just so I don't forget the topics. And again, I, it doesn't look like a paragraph. It doesn't look like anything that you would maybe um, expect it to be as far as a speaker's notes, but 
um, that's usually what I use. Now, personal appearance does have a big impact on the way that someone is going to receive your message. I don't know if you've ever seen that episode of Bob's Burgers where Bob actually puts on a suit and people treat him completely different. Well, unfortunately, that's true. When you select clothing for a presentation, consider what the audience ex expectations are, the situation in which you'll be speaking. Again, if you're able to see the space ahead of time, look at something as very easy as what is the background color? If they're going to have a black drape behind you, you may not want to wear a black suit or a black dress. You want to stand out from the background. So again, if you feel good you, about the way you look, you are going to have that extra confidence. You're not going to be continuously being fidgety with your outfit or your accessories. Um, and you're going to be able to concentrate on the message. Rehearsing. Now, if you rehearse, when you rehearse, I should say when, practice makes perfect, okay? Now, your presentation does not need to be identical every single time you practice it or every time you rehearse, but there are several different ways that you can rehearse using an auto audio recorder, a mirror, record yourself with video, or with friends and family using a live audience. So if you use an audio recorder, listen to how fast how loud, how soft, how distinct your words sound and make sure that your words are not jumbling all together. Whether you are changing your pitch or tone, that is what is going to bring your audience in and you're not gonna have that monotone kind of sound. And how long did you take? Now, when it comes to time, I'll tell you what, when you rehearse, you will probably do it faster when you actually do it for real. So just remember that as well. Oops. Oh no, that was the right next one. There we go. Mirror or camera. So when you're looking at it visually from in a mirror or a video camera, look for your facial expressions. Look for do you, you know effective use of your body and your hands. Um, some things you know to, to remember is body gestures. You need to make them large. If you're up on um, a stage or people in the back of the audience, you don't want to make small movements. You want to make them large. So also video camera, how do you sound? How is your pacing? How does your look come across? And how it was the overall message you deliver? Now, to me, once you kind of figure out all of those kinks, the one of the best ways to practice is to use a live audience. So ask a friend, a family member, to practice your presentation, especially if you're doing a presentation for an external audience. After you're done, ask them, what was my topic? What point did I prove? That is going to tell you whether you're actually getting your message across to your audience or not. Then you can ask them things like, did I make eye contact? Was I loud enough? Did I stutter? Use, mm, well, it's like, you know, things like that. And was my conclusion effective? Did they understand it? The last thing that you could ask them is, was there any part of the presentation where I had weird pronunciation, where words start to run together, you know, things of that nature. But that's really going to give you great feedback, especially with another person, because they don't understand what your presentation is supposed to be about. So if you can relay what it's supposed to be about, then you've done your job. One of the best things that I like to tell my students is when you're presenting to check the room. And I don't mean check the attitude of the room. I mean, get there early for your presentation, make sure everything works, make sure you're your audience is going to be comfortable. Check the seating, the lighting, check the temperature. I know that's not something you would usually talk about, but a lot of times um, rooms will run either cold or hot. So check the temperature. And finally, definitely check your equipment and your graphic aid. So assume, because more than likely than not, you're um, not going to be able to hook up directly to the equipment. So make sure you have all of the bits and bobs that you might need just in case something goes wrong. Delivering the message, use appropriate facial expressions, maintain eye contact with various members of your audience, 
explain every graphic and why it is up there. Post or distribute handouts only when you want the audience to use them or to read them or more than likely to take them. So you wouldn't want to put company secrets or anything like that on a handout. Consult your notes as an outline. You don't want to read directly from them. Continue to talk even if something goes wrong. It'll get fixed eventually. Remember that your audience wants you to succeed. They want to understand the information they want you to do well. And always at the end, I try to give a good five or 10 minutes, depending upon how long the presentation was, to allow the audience to ask questions. If you've done your job, that just means you're going to end a good 10 minutes early. Finally, let's look at organizing a group presentation. So this can be a little bit more difficult because remember when we talked about writing a group paper, we're looking at different perspectives and different expertise. But in order to present a presentation with a group, you really, really have to plan well. So your team has to be cohesive divide the topics, decide who's going to do what, set time limits, transition between speakers. Um, a good way to transition between speakers is that, you know, Mary Smith is going to be speaking to this topic since that is her expertise. Introduce your, your group members at the beginning. Maybe at the beginning, state what each group member is going to speak about. Provide graphic aids and handouts. That's the same whether you're in a group or in a solo. And also answer questions. Now, when you answer questions in a group, you need to be careful that people don't start talking over each other. So make sure that there is definitely a uh, respect going on between group members and allow the person with the most knowledge of that subject answer that question. That's the smartest thing to do. So hopefully you have been enlightened a little bit more on presentations and you've gotten some ideas for your final presentation. As always, I was, I am available through email or through phone call with my office phone, and I will see you all next time.